This is a work of political and social commentary. The content of this video is not meant for children under the age of 13. Parental discretion is advised. With lockdowns and stay-at-home orders going all over the world right now, coronavirus seems to be the only newsworthy topic of discussion. Every piece of news, every last article, seems to contribute to an endless stream of COVID-19 reporting. The economy has shut down. Unemployment is through the roof. The markets have settled down somewhat, but are still significantly off and still volatile. Countries are beginning to nationalize their critical supplies and blame one another for every critical shortage they face. The world is on fire right now. What better time for some roasted opinions? I've been trying for over a week now to gather stories of hope during this crisis. I've even got a script put together, but for now, that script is shelved. The spread of the virus is touching us all, and quite frankly, I don't think anyone's any more interested in hearing me talk about how things will get better than I am interested in saying it. The worldwide official numbers have surpassed 1 million infections. The U.S. has now taken over as the country with the most confirmed cases, but there are now three countries with more than 100,000 infections each, and 17 with more than 10,000. The economic news is pretty grim. Major companies have switched over production to critical supplies voluntarily, but that wasn't enough production to meet the needs. Governments are now beginning to order private manufacturers to switch their production to critical supplies and then nationalizing those supplies, ordering those companies to stop exporting their supplies to other nations. And as for China, well, their reputation is taking a pretty major hit at the moment. The U.S. intelligence community has accused China of underreporting their COVID outbreak infections based on evidence brought out of China. Investigations into COVID's origin have turned up evidence that the virus may just have come from a research institute just a few blocks away from that infamous seafood market named as the epicenter of the original outbreak. Evidence has also emerged that China is actively pursuing a propaganda campaign to blame the outbreak on the United States, using the absurd argument that the virus came from USAMRID and was smuggled into Wuhan by American special agents. Oh, and there's even new reports that China may be hoarding personal protective equipment, and even purchased everything that they could buy from U.S. stores to ship to China. Naturally, those reports are met with accusations of racism despite the fact that those reports are being published in major media outlets. Responses from every country include at least some element of the absurd. Venezuela just branded a German cruise ship in international waters off the Venezuelan coast as a warship full of mercenaries. So they sent out a 262-foot-long patrol boat to intercept it while it conducted routine engine maintenance. The Naiguata wound up ramming the cruise ship Resolute, a roughly 400-foot-long ship which happens to have a reinforced hull for sailing in icy waters. The Resolute is now at harbor in Curacao for repairs to minor damage sustained in the ramming. The Naiguata is now resting on the bottom about 13 miles off the coast of La Tortuga Island. Thankfully, no one was reported to be killed in the incident. The U.S. Navy has responded by sending ships to the area to conduct freedom of navigation exercises. That phrase is the official name for what is effectively a warship sailing in international waters close to another country's territorial waters to remind them that the U.S. has a huge navy and will defend merchant traffic in general from hostile attacks. One ship that they haven't sent is the Theodore Roosevelt, a fleet carrier which is currently docked in Guam and attempting to disinfect the ship while every crew member is landed, tested for COVID, treated if necessary, and then returned to the ship. TR Skipper raised a ruckus by sending an email to Pack Fleet pleading for a faster response to the COVID outbreak on board, which he happened to CC to at least 20 other people. Someone then leaked that information to a newspaper in San Francisco, and now the carrier needs a new captain in addition to everything else it needs. Europe is currently a major hotspot, with a combined count amongst EU members, which is actually higher than that of the United States. That's opening up cracks between the member states, who are all trying to nationalize their own supplies and accusing each other of refusing to help. Like I said, it's been a hell of a week. People I know have tested positive for COVID. 
Places I've been are now in lockdown. Businesses where I've done business for a long time are now closed, and I'm guessing that some of those stores won't reopen. 10 million people have already filed for unemployment due to COVID in the United States. The big stimulus bills are now law, but as for those stimulus checks, yeah, check the fine print, because the Treasury is issuing those payments as advances on the refunds from the 2020 tax filings. That's right, those checks are effectively a payday loan, and God help the folks who get a stimulus check but normally don't receive a tax refund. The stimulus will show up as an increased tax bill for them next year. The sooner that this pandemic is over, the better. Follow the guidelines, folks. Stay at home until and unless you absolutely have to go somewhere. Get to know your family again over some board games, jigsaw puzzles, and maybe some hands of cards. Take this opportunity to do all of those things that you didn't have time to do. Do what you can to support those fighting this outbreak and make their jobs easier by keeping yourselves fit and accident-free. The world is on fire already. Make sure that you are pouring water on the flames, not gasoline.